Please join with me with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome to the May 14th uh, Board of Selectmen's meet meeting. Um, first, we are going to have a public comment period. Is there anybody here that wishes to speak from the public? Mr. Preston. Good morning. How are you today? Good, thank you. Charlie Preston, 47 Glade Path, Hampton. I wanted to touch briefly. You had an appointment with Julie LeBranch about basically what's a story poll on the tides. And right now they're talking about putting one down to transfer station. And I, I heard this this past week at the last Wednesday at the uh, village district meeting. And I said, what's wrong with putting one out in front of the fire station where I think it was the uh, website in the No Hampton. They posted a picture of the water just inside the doors of the fire station. And, you know, Julie's going to talk later, but I didn't know if that would be a great location because you could actually take the grades of that door with the water and there's pictures of it and transfer it to 30 feet away. There's a light pole down in the corner of the lot. It's, uh, it's concrete sawn to about three feet high. It's about 18 foot diameter. It has a light on it. Just shoot that grade from there and, you know, we might be able to get an art student from the high school that could you know, do some watermarks on it and just put the data on it where we had the highest tide because it's a great high-profile location. They're talking about the transfer station. So she said that's a possibility, and our DPW could take transit shots and do it in, you know, in an hour, and that's commuting. So I'd just like to ask you to consider that. And, um, it happens to be right across the street from where I'm trying to get you guys to work on the gate. It's directly across the street from that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Anybody else in a public comment? <laughs> Seeing none, back to the board for the approval uh, for announcements community calendar. Hey, Louise, no? no, nothing tonight. Gina? Thank you. I have one thing from Hampton Conservation Commission is having the annual painted rain barrel auction to take place this Saturday between 9 and 12 in the town parking lot. And it's also the Hampton Gardens Club's annual plant sale. And thanks to Aquarian Water Company for pro providing the rain barrels, Wicked Awesome Paint and Wallpaper for donating the paint, and Wayne's Auto Body for applying a clear coat to protect the painted finishes. So if anyone wants to go to that, it's 9 to 12 in the Town Hall parking lot. And also on the same day is Hampton's first uh, Daughters Annual Dance. It's a new uh, nonprofit that originated here in Hampton. One of the co-founders is Aaron Duvall, and it's going to be Hosted at Watercon High School this Saturday. Tickets are seven fifty from six to eight, and it's for kids of all ages between kindergarten and eighth grade. Thank you, Jim. Nothing. Rick. Well, I'd like to uh, thank everyone for coming out for the uh, May tenth meeting. It was uh, very uh, widely attended, and I think a lot was uh, uh, the public was heard probably for the very first time yeah. <laughs> um, in a very big way. Thank you. All right. Have the approval of the minutes for April 30th. Also move, Mr. Chairman. Second. Second. All those in favor? Uh, I wasn't here for that one. So four, one abstain. Okay, consent agenda. We have a entertainment license and posted permit for Finest Kind Brewery. We have the cemetery deeds. We have a license for coin-operated devices. Parade per and public gathering license, raffle permit, and use of town office for the New Hampshire Coastal Adaptation Work Group for the month of June. Uh, anybody want to move the calendar? Move. Second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. First appointment we have is the tax collector, Donna Bennett. Oh, thank you. Well, up to date? Yes. Guilty yes. parties. Yes. <laughs> Good. Thank you. 
So that is the up-to-date list for the uh, deeding. Deeding was, uh, today was the date they had to pay by 5 p.m. And these six properties have not paid. The only one out of these six that I've actually heard from is number one on the list who would like to ask um, to set up a payment agreement. Payment agreement actually is between you and them. I just do the collecting. So um, I'm agreeable to at least try that, which we usually, it's about a 50-50 shot whether we, you know, they actually live up to the agreement or not. But I do have that with me. If we need to take a vote on that for you or? I believe so. Yes. All right, I make the motion that we go along with Second. the tax collector's uh, recommendation on that property. Second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. How about the remaining? Uh, the remaining, I have no contact with the owners as far as hearing back from them. Um, number eight on the list is a marsh property, which normally we just take those and they go right to conservation. Um, I believe number 25 and 26 are vacant land that may be wetland and um, no contact with the owners, although they they all have signed their certified notice. So they all did receive their certified notices. We do have one. Uh, one is a residential where if you take it, I believe you'll have to do an eviction. Is that number five or number 12? That would be number 12. And number five, I'm not sure that there's anyone actually there. Okay. And number 12, you, you've tried to talk to the people? And number 12 has had a prior uh, agreement with us and lived up to her portion of it, but the payment stopped. And then now we're back on the list again, and I haven't heard anything from her. Is it a substantial amount of money? Um, I don't think so. I mean... Not, not, I mean, nothing that I don't think that we could try to do a, another payment agreement with. I'm just a little disappointed that I haven't actually heard from her. Okay. Do you have any recommendation? Well, you know, I never want to take anybody's house yeah, away. Yeah, I know. Um, I mean, nobody does. Right. Unfortunately, um, a, lot of, a lot of them are repeats. So. Fred, do you have any? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would suggest that number eight uh, be taken for the Conservation Commission and numbers 25 and 26, which are vacant land, be taken. They can always redeem those uh, if they're not wet, but I believe they are. Mm -hmm. And the other? Five and the other, I think, uh, no. Uh, you have uh, one's a condominium unit. Uh, we need some more investigation because we would automatically be subject to all condominium charges that we'd have to pay. Mm. Uh, and uh, number one uh, is a mobile home. Uh, same problem because it's in a park. Number five, uh, I think that's a new one. That's that a new one done. on my list, yes. So Where is that? Auburn Ave is off Brown Ave. Yeah. Auburn Ave and then Auburn Ave extensions a little shoot a little off, of off of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'd suggest that we do a little more research on that and, and come back to the board. Uh, if we're unable to get a payment agreement within the next 30 days. Okay. Yeah, I, may, I make a motion that we take, go along with the recommendation to take uh, eight, number eight, number 25, and number 26. Second. All those in favor? Okay, I have a question. All right. Your question uh, here. Given the information that the tax collector was kind enough to provide us, it looks like a lot of the uh, properties that have been listed are in very bad condition. Are we uh, taking any steps to at least perhaps do some kind of an inspection? The only the only two we're, we're looking at, the rest of them have been all caught up, correct? Mm -hmm. But so the only two we're looking at is number number five and number 12. Right, but the ones that have been, the description, there have been descriptions yeah, right. provided to us for all of them, and I'm just wondering if we have any way to take a look if there are substandard living conditions in some of these properties. I I'm just, I just asking were, a question. I would think if they had to rent them, they would have to have... They have to come in compliance. They'd have to come into compliance with the, the permits. Yeah. So how do we know that they're renting? Well, we find that out pretty quick because the first thing that happens is with the uh, properties of that type, our welfare officer notifies us when they come in for a visit. 
Okay. And immediately we, we inform them they have to come up to code. Okay. And then the, the rental stops. So. Because the you know the list was quite specific, and I was oh, kind yes. of concerned when I saw the conditions yeah. of a lot those, of the properties. Those have been on there for the ones you're talking about have been on there now for oh, at yeah. least the last six or seven years. Yeah. I know. So number five and number twelve. That we go along with the uh, town manager and the tax collector's recommendation to investigate number five and number 12 further before taking any action. No I'll motion, second. second. All those in favor? Unanimous. All right. Very good. I'm going to leave the payment agreement with you if that's okay. Right. And there's a, um, a deed waiver that goes along with that as well. And good job because you had 12 yes. on there yeah. earlier, right? Yeah, I had 20, 20. 20. 20. Okay, so <laughs> good job. Thank you, my dear. <clears throat> You want, you want us to sign it on its so, way over to you, Fred? Or? Sure. All right. The next nice person work. we have up is Staff Sergeant Darren Hayes. Yes, sir. How are you? Hi. Uh, we turned in packets last week. I was wondering if everybody, yeah. uh, there's, if anybody needed another one. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Got mine. So oh, I, uh, I'm Darren Hayes. This is Diana Carr. We are both uh, boom operators at... Pease Air Force Base in the 133rd uh, Air Fueling Squadron. And we're just here today to make a request that um, a new street be named after a Staff Sergeant Desiree Loy, who's a Hampton resident. And she unfortunately perished in a, in a crash in 1985 uh, in a KC-135, which is the same aircraft that we fly today. Uh, that you, I'm sure everyone has seen uh, KC-135 doing pattern work over Hampton. We've uh, been around for over 50 years doing the same thing. And, um, and just to be clear about it, uh, we're not asking that any street be renamed. Uh, no citizens would have to change a mailing address or anything like that. But just uh, simply be put to the top of the list of a new street that may, may come up in the future. Any questions of the board? Mary Louise? Well, you're doubly effective because you brought the Navy with you tonight. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yeah. Was, uh, <laughs> I, I think it's a great idea. So, Regina? Kerr, I think it's a great idea as well. Thank you for the presentation. I'll make a, I'll make a motion that we go along with the uh, naming the street. Second. Uh, putting oh, it on yeah, the yeah. list. Oh, yeah. uh, it's going to go on the list. Yeah, yeah it'll, it'll, go, the it'll list. be on the top of the list. Top of the list. For yeah. The yeah, and that, you know, you have on it here is Loy Avenue, but usually when we name ones after Pete, the veterans and stuff, we have a, it's their whole name, isn't it? Yes. Usually, yeah. Yes. So that's what, what it was. Outstanding. Be. Yes, I mean, that so. was just something we came up with. Yep. Just trying nope, to. I understand that. You know, I, I went to school with, with uh, Desiree. <laughs> she was a year after, uh, she was a year younger than I was, but so I, she graduated the next year, but I do remember her in high school. So, have a motion second. All those in favor? Unanimous. And I didn't get to talk. I oh. wanted to um, say that I, we, I think there is going to be a new street coming up shortly. So Outstanding. That will be great. Good. Outstanding. And I know that uh, Sheila Nudd has worked very hard keeping <laughs> Desiree's uh, name alive for everybody to remember her. Yeah. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yes, sir. And we all appreciate it. She's Thank been you. very helpful with us and uh, being here to your service, too. Thank you, Thank you sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you. The next uh, person on the agenda is Commander Davis, the XO, Lieutenant Commander J. R. J. France, and Cobb E.T. B.C.S. <laughs> Brendan Wallace, USN. Desi, uh, I know you're here, and you want to say a couple words and introduce these fine gentlemen? Absolutely. Good evening. As a member of the USS Hampton Committee, it is my honor to introduce the members of the USS Hampton that are here this evening. But first, a brief history. The USS Hampton is a nuclear-powered, Los Angeles-class, fast-attack submarine. She has a complement of 15 officers and a crew of 125. <coughs> The USS Hampton was specifically named for towns in Virginia, Iowa, South Carolina, and New Hampshire, even though there are 14 additional towns named Hampton in America. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present Commanding Officer, Commander Theron Davis, Executive Officer, Lieutenant Commander A.J. France, and the Chief of the Boat, Senior Chief Brandon Wallace. Yeah. Thanks, Desi. Appreciate it. All right, so uh, we've been here for almost uh, two years up in Portsmouth, and uh, 
The time we spent with uh, the town of Hampton has been outstanding. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, my sailors go home. And if they don't, they don't really have a home here in general without you guys. And so you've been a great, uh, great asset to us. Uh, we've had uh, many opportunities come down and, uh, and march on your parade in, uh, in the fall um, to go to the uh, seafood festival and various other things. So we definitely appreciate that. The one thing I'll challenge everybody in this room, because I, I, I'm sort of short on board, I leave in August, uh, is to keep that relationship going. Uh, it's been <coughs> difficult, right? We were in Virginia until 2007. When we left there, that, that relationship dropped off uh, with the town of Virginia, uh, Hampton, Virginia. We've never had a relationship in South Carolina or in Iowa. So uh, this is really the only relationship that we have, and so I'd like that to continue on. Um, as part of that, uh, we'd like to present this plaque. Uh, it's to the uh, Hampton Committee from the officer, or the current officers of USS Hampton. Thank you for your support during the EOH, which is engineering overhaul, uh, 2016 to 2018, fair winds of falling seas. So if you could uh, find a place to put that, I'd appreciate it. Absolutely. All right. Thank you very much. And uh, Kyle, do you have anything to say? Uh, put you on the spot. Thank you. So uh, I've only been here for about two months, but uh, even before I arrived, I heard great things about the town of Hampton and all that you've done for the USS Hampton. Uh, you've given our sailors an opportunity to give back to the community, and we all appreciate that, and I look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you. Excellent. And uh, I've only been XO for two weeks, so I'm pretty new up here to the area. I worked with the Submarine Squadron in San Diego for the tour before this, and did a lot of visits to our boats up here in, in New Hampshire. While we're excited to go back to San Diego, I would be sad to leave this group because in my short time, I've already uh, had a couple opportunities to interface with the city of Hampton. It's been pretty great. So you are definitely welcome to come out to San Diego, particularly in the winter. Uh, and I highly recommend that you take the opportunity to come enjoy uh, slightly warmer weather. Yeah, so just real quick, so we uh, will be underway first part of May or of June, uh, get out underway for sea trials, pull back into Groton for a little while. Uh, get away from there, uh, head south. I'm trying to pull in port call or do a port call in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and then we'll head down to the tongue of the ocean, do some sound trials, and then uh, Pan Panama Canal transit to the west coast. Uh, once we get on the west coast, we'll head south, go across the equator. It gives them my crew the opportunity to do a shellback ceremony because uh, they may not get that. Uh, and then we'll head north and uh, pull into San Diego. And then uh, about a week later after that, I'll do a change of command. So. I get a little bit more time at sea, which is good for me. Uh, that's where I belong. That's where the crew belongs. We're ready. Uh, but thank you so much for your support. Thank you. Wait one. Wait one. Wait one. Wait one. Um, we wanted to uh, give you this coin. What it represents is it's a serialized uh, coin representing the bicentennial of the New Hampshire State House. It has your serialized number on it, 767. Nice. And uh, we wanted to be sure to give that to you tonight. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Michael. <laughs> With the, the captain, please. Michael. Yeah, captain, captain. Politicians. <laughs> Perfect. I also got something here, gentlemen. We have a proclamation that we had done up. Okay. And so I'd like to uh, read it, if I may. It says, a resolution in recognition of the USS Hampton, SSN 767. Whereas the officers and crew of the USS Hampton have served to protect the citizens of the United States and the town of Hampton for 24 years. And the citizen, whereas the citizens of Hampton have enjoyed the opportunity to participate in many activities, social gatherings with our namesake naval vessel and her dedicated crew. And whereas the officers and crew of the USS Hampton have personally contributed to the well-being of the town of Hampton through their generous work in constructing and park and recreation infrastructure projects, including in restoring two playgrounds and assembling two movable bleachers, also being very active participants in community events such as the Historical Society's Pig Roast, the Smutty Nose Oktoberfest, the Christmas tree lighting, and the Christmas parade, and sharing their Christmas party with the community. And whereas the, the officers and crew of the USS Hampton have served the citizens of Hampton above and beyond the call of duty on many occasions, often at their own personal sacrifice. And whereas the officers and crew of the USS Hampton have served with distinction in providing inspiration and leadership that have inspired the citizens of Hampton. Be it resolved that the selectmen and the citizens of the town of Hampton make it known by their appreciation, dedication, and assistance rendered to the citizens of Hampton by the officers and crew of the USS Hampton, your adopted family. Whereunto we have set the hand to this seal the 14th day of May, May, in the year of our Lord, 2018.
the 379th year of the founding of Hampton, and the 338th year of the founding of the United of the state of New Hampshire, and the 241st year of the independence of the United States of America. <laughs> Signed by the, all five board members. So. I'll come back. Thank you all. We'll hang this up on the, on the boat. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Thanks again. Thank Mr. you all. Chairman, Appreciate it. Thank you. Could you, yes. <laughs> could you indulge me for a moment while sure. these gentlemen are here? Because I have a two minute long uh, Navy story that might okay. uh, make me chuckle <laughs> a little bit. My, my oldest daughter was a uh, Navy veteran, and she was transferred from San Diego down to Kings Bay in Georgia, and I was at work. So when I got home, Dad had taken the call, and he said, she's at Kings Bay. And I said, great. And he said, she's on the USS Cannabis. He meant it was the USS Canopus. <laughs> and that's a subtender, as you know. Yes, I've been worn out for her before. But, but Dad insisted forevermore no, that she was serving on the USS Canopus. Plenty of smoking going on. Uh, <laughs> so, gentlemen, we thank you for your service. Thank you for coming here tonight. We really appreciate it. We really appreciate all you've done for the town. And uh, safe travels, and I hope we see you back again. Thank you. All right. Thank you. We'll wait just a second and allow them to clear out. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I couldn't resist. Lots of smoking going on there. I couldn't resist. Uh, so, and Dad, Dad insisted forever that that's what, what she said. If that's what she said, that's what it was. Warren, thank you for your service, too. Certainly welcome. And thank you for yours. Today's Craig's birthday. I know that. Uh -huh. He's a month and a day older than I am. <laughs> Good man. It's Warren White. He's a sweetheart. He really is. Warren's a great guy. He's the nicest person. <clears throat> He's been chasing me around since I was a little kid. <laughs> Sometimes I needed more of that than. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next we have uh, Julie LeBranch from the Rockingham Planning Commission. Kind of a hard act to follow, but yeah, really. There goes my whole my audience, huh? But you got water here that ties in with the Navy. Yes, it does. Absolutely. Um, hi, my name is Julie LeBranch. I'm a senior planner with the Rockingham Planning Commission, and I haven't been to see you in quite some time, I think. Um, I'm here to talk to you a little bit about an ongoing project that I've been working on with the, with your town staff, uh, and the planning department, conservation, and also the uh, public works. And it's called the High Water Mark Initiative. And I wanted to just hand out a couple of things for you here. Oh, thank you. Hmm. And also one other just thank you. thing of business is this is a, 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 federally, a federally funded uh, grant project and they want us to document when we do outreach and we, when we actually meet with people. So I have a sign-in sheet if you could just sign in. Okay. <laughs> okay. She's taking attendance, so we got to... Yeah. No, they just want us to it's document dangerous. when we say we went to a meeting that that's good. People were there. <laughs> um, so I, the two pieces of materials that you have here, one is, a, is a, a copy of a PowerPoint presentation with some slides with sort of an overview of the project. And then the other one is actually a, a, um, a rendition of or printout of what your, uh, the sign that we'll, we'll be installing in town is going to look like. Uh, it's going to be quite a lot larger than that, though. Um, so first off, just to kind of go through the, uh, the slides in the, uh, one by one here, give you an overview. So this project is called the High Watermark Initiative, and it is funded through a grant from the New Hampshire Coastal Program through NOAA as a federal grant. And it's actually modeled after a FEMA um, program called the High Watermark Initiative um, that goes around the country documenting and, and, and actually um, documenting high water flood levels from different, from different storms. Mm -hmm. They've done this quite extensively in the southern states, especially riverine communities where our high water marks can go up as high as 22 feet. We actually see, saw one installation of a launch event for a sign and the sign was way up in the air. Um, 
Here we did, uh, we're fortunate not to have quite, quite so severe flooding levels, but, but definitely as we have seen in the, in the north, nor'easters we've had in March of this year and other storms in the past, but also the type of what we call nuisance flooding and you know, seasonal high tide flooding that, that Hampton Beach is actually experiencing. Um, we, Hampton, your uh, town manager and others thought it would be a great idea to actually participate in documenting some of this flooding um, and, and, and some of potential future flooding. So we're working with uh, Portsmouth, Rye, Hampton, and Seabrook to actually do this initiative. And basically, it gets, consists of a couple of different components. So one, the first and primary goal, um, the next slide, is to uh, install permanent markers and signage. Uh, and that's what this sign is all about, which explains you know, why uh, being more aware of coastal yeah. flooding is important. Um, um, what the um, how the how, ch how changes have have occurred in the past sea level has risen almost eight inches in the, since 1900 and that's ca that's what's causing this nuisance flooding that we see today and then you, you know science you know projections uh, you know uh, conclude that we could see you know further increases in sea level and what we want to document is just ge generically what if you know what would be the le level if sea re level rose two feet four feet or six feet high and also to document the current 100 year flood elevation so we've, I'm working with the town staff. We decided to to, to install this sign um, at the transfer station, and it may sound like a weird place to put it, but one of the criteria that we we were evaluating when, with selecting a site was one where it had high visibility. Um, it enabled people to have park and get out and look at the sign and read it, so they have exposure to it, and one that reached local residents. Um, we looked at, uh, at locations, as Mr. Preston uh, mentioned, there are definitely some very high-profile flood areas down at the, in Hampton Beach along, off of Ashworth Avenue, um, but no place where just pedestrians might see it or people in cars, so if I, and, and mostly reaching not so much residents but tourists. And that wasn't really the primary objective. The objective was really to raise awareness in the community um, for many different reasons. Um, you just had a ballot a uh, uh, warrant article this year that the, ta the entire town had to vote on, and that was the free board requirement for new construction and substantial mm. reconstruction of, of, mm. of buildings, a really important thing, which probably only affects a, a small portion of the, of the population in, in the town of Hampton, um, but needs to be voted on by the entire citizenry and vote, voting, you know, voting voters. So it's really important to try and raise awareness across the board, not just people, uh, residents of the beach but, um, and property owners in the beach, but everyone in the community. So um, the, your, your local staff said, well, you know, people go, or line up at the gate every Saturday or the weekends or whatever to go to the transfer station, so we're going to put it outside of the gate so that, the, so that people have access to it all the time. And it's going to be an area that's really close to the marsh with it. Actually, it's going to be interesting. The sign will be there, and you can see the marsh in the background. Um, so that was the reason, rationale, for actually placing the sign where we did. But Mr. Preston, we did come, we were at the Hampton um, Beach Village District Commission meeting last week and brought up the point that there are locations where we could actually benchmark. And actually benchmarking the, the flood elevations on a building like that, as he mentioned, so like drawing a line, saying this was the flood of whatever date it was, is a very common practice, and thank you, in many communities to actually memorialize you know, flood elevations and to see how they change over time, whether that line goes up or down or whatever it does. So that's the primary objective is to have this sign. And so the signs are in production now, and. Um, we should be getting them in, in June, and we hope to have a launch event uh, with publicity and, and have a you know a sort of a formal unveiling of the sign. Um, and you usually only do one location in the town. Um, in Seabrook, we're doing two, and in Rye, we're doing two. Um, we again, we're kind of on the fence about doing a second one just because some of the more high high profile places that flood are also ones that are get that get damaged during storms. So we don't want to put a sign in a place where it would actually you know, get washed away or something like that. So, mm -hmm. so I think that what we were, we're contemplating um, putting a second, some sort of installation or signage down near the Ashworth Avenue um, area, and whether it's painting on a bit on the building or some something. And, and the, um, Chris Jacobs was at the meeting last week with the, with the commission and and said that the DPW could pick up the cost of the sign if we couldn't cover it under our budget. Um, so we're going to investigate doing a second a second location. Excellent. Yeah. Any questions of what? I see that one of the pictures you have in here was taken by Jay Diener, yes. who's our Conservation Commission chairman. Yes. Um, Jay also suggested to us the possibility of uh, 
uh, having drones used after significant flooding events to take pictures from the air. Yes. So that we can keep a year by year folder of all the significant events, like this couple of the storms we had this past winter, mm -hmm. so that we can compare from year to year, especially looking along the ocean front and up the river area in Hampton. Right. So um, I think that's probably hopefully helpful as well. Great. It would be nice if other communities maybe thought of, of doing that. I think uh, you're all familiar with the King Tide Photo Contest that the Coastal Adaptation Work Groups holds every year. And one of the uh, second, I think, second place photographs was a drone photograph. And it is, it just it has, gives you such dramatic imagery of flooding um, and extent over a wide area. And I think that's a great idea to, to, to keep a, a I'd record like to of see, it. I'd you know, us yeah. implementing that. I think uh, hopefully that we will. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I believe Hampton won that contest. Yes, yes, your yeah, was the winning photo was from Hampton. Yeah, yeah. It was of, of Hampton. Um, yes. No, I, I think it's a good idea. I have no questions. Thank you. I heard your last week at the precinct. I heard your presentation. As oh, you well. were there. So, okay. Yeah. So this is a, a repeat. Yeah. So I think it's a great idea. <clears throat> I, I think it's a great idea, Rick. Thank you. So You're welcome. I just had I just had two small other oh, okay. small parts. Oh, sorry. So the uh, along with the signs, the other two pieces of deliverables that I'll be producing for the town are is a, a case story of, of Hampton, documenting all the uh, sort of climate related and flood related adaptation and mitigation actions you've done over the over over the last few years because you've done quite a few. If you recall the Tides to Storms project, which was several years ago, and uh, Mr. Welsh uh, participated in all those meetings. <laughs> Thank you very much for all your time. You're welcome. Um, which, we, which produced, you know, flood maps and uh, statistical information about impacts to infrastructure and resources and things. Good. So the case study will sort of be a, a, a summary of all that activity and sort of maybe some next steps of where, where the community might, might head. Um, that, that, that's, a piece, that's, a, that's a piece of work that's really important. It's very useful for many, for many reasons, not just for PR about flooding, but also if you decide to go in for like a, a FEMA grant or some other grant to do some sort of adaptation related ac activity, you, you attach that to your, your, your application and it's sort of like a gold mine of snapshot of who, who you are and what you've accomplished. So it, it has lots of, lots of uses. And the last part is a, is a checklist. We're creating a sort of a, um, not customized necessarily, but a, a, a checklist for all the four communities to use, looking at what you've completed, what you might want to work on, what some opportunities are. So sort of like a look, a little bit, a little bit of a mini action plan. And it's sort of like some of the recommendations that came out of the Tides to Storms um, project, but but also the fact that your community has has momentum now. You've 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 accomplished many different actions and activities. Um, and this just being the, 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 the latest. So uh, the checklist will look, maybe look looking forward a little, little bit further um, of what you can do with, like, for example, the information you get out of that, that stormwater drainage study that, you, that you're going to fund. So, so those three things are what the deliverables will be for the project. And we're hoping to have the launch events in the last um, week or two of June. I'll let you, we're going to be selecting that date before the end of this month. So we'll let you know when we select the date. And we'll get publicity out and get the word out for, the, for that. And your, your community is, is, is providing some in-kind match for, the, for this grant, um, about roughly almost $3,000 in in-kind you know, staff participation. Uh, also, uh, DBW will be surveying the, 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 the post and the elevations where the installation sign will actually be, so it's at the correct elevation. And, um, and then staff time to actually install, install the, uh, the, the, the sign. So it's going to be 30 by 22. So it's going to be, you know, good size sign. Pretty good size sign. It's big enough so that if someone's standing next to it, they can read it. Um, it's, and it also, it's going to be in a place where there's parking and people. If someone he hears about this or learns about it, they can drive down and look at it if they want to. And it's got a little. It's kind of funny. One of um, the coastal program staff who are who are little hipsters and quite a bit younger than me and be very hip on social media uh, put a little tagline on the bo bottom with a hashtag to take your picture next to the sign and, and post it to social media. So <laughs> we're, go we're going to be watching that closely to see how many people actually do that. <laughs> Excellent. It's kind of That's fun. Kind of neat. Any other questions for? No. All set. So, so do we need a motion to accept this? I would. I'll make I'll that motion. Oh, go ahead, Rick. I'll make that motion. I'll second oh. it. Motion by Rick, second it. Jim, all those in favor? Unanimous. There you go. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you. It's coming in. Town Manager's Report. <clears throat> ah. Chairman, members of the board, 
Uh, I'll make my weekly plea. Please register your dog. Uh, all your licenses expired this past April 30th. Uh, we still have uh, roughly 600 dogs on license. Register now before fines start uh, being assessed under the, under the state law. We really don't want to see people paying additional costs to register their dogs. Household Hazardous Waste Day is June 23rd. Please check the website for required information. There's quite a lot you need to know about what you need to bring and those things you don't need to bring. The last chance to change your party registration is June 4th for the upcoming state primary election. The town clerk's office is closed this Wednesday, May 16th. They are all attending required state training. The Department of Public Works is seeking seasonal laborers for up to 13 weeks of work in the following divisions, Highway Division 3, uh, wastewater treatment plant, they're looking for one person, Wa refuse and recycling collection, five people, transfer station one, beach crew supervisor one, beach crew six. Please see the town website for further information. And that's it, Mr. Chairman. Any question in the town manager's report? Mayor Lewis? I, I'll do it under old business, I guess. I have three to bring up. Okay. Regina? No, thank you. Jim? Nice, fast report. Rick, I thank you for your report. <laughs> thank you. I like I like number five because that's where I started my career with this town. Is that right? Yes. So that's a good place. It is. It is. So okay, we're under old business. But you worked hard in the old days. Some of these well, new they, guys just want to play with their computer. They still work hard. If, they, if they're doing that job, if they're, if they're the pickers at the beach, or they're they're working on the back of that trash truck, that could they're be hard. working very hard. Yeah. Oh, I don't I mean. I can sympathize with them. I've been there. I've done that. So <laughs> yep. I don't want to do it again. I don't mean to say anything against current employees, okay. but for those who are thinking of coming on, some of them don't want to do the hard work. Absolutely. Uh, old business. Yes. Um, I uh, talked with Fred briefly earlier today, and I'm inclined to want to um, ask, have the board ask Fred to send a letter to the DOT from us uh, demanding that they send a crew down to paint the crosswalk lines and put up the, the uh, signs for the crosswalks. I think they have blinking or uh, light activated signs it's because we're coming into the heavy summer season and uh, it's dangerous out there with no crosswalks indicated and I think uh, that was mentioned to us uh, the first night when people were sworn in. I think uh, we have any chance of we shouldn't be demanding anything. I think we can ask them to paint them. Well, I think that's uh, that's appropriate. I don't think we get anywhere by demanding anything. Well, Fred uh, is put more polite than I am, so uh, I'm sure that he would. I, <laughs> he I, would I don't think you're going to see any. You may see some signage if they have some, but I don't think you're going to see any of the blinking signs until they they actually get into their project down there because that's that's true. Those those are about six thousand dollars. An intersection at a crosswalk and uh, I know we'd all like to see them there but that's I, I think if we can get them to paint the crosswalks I think we'd be much better off in that point well is it uh, acceptable if I move to ask the managers to send a letter to DOT uh, asking politely if they will, will come and do the that. crosswalks I will second that all those in favor unanimous oh next um, I had a talk with uh, Henry Fuller a couple of days ago. He will be in, a, in June yep. uh, to talk about the hydrants. And uh, we are coming up, I believe it's my understanding that we pay the hydrant rentals uh, twice a year and would be coming up in July. That's Do you correct. want a motion for us to withhold payment temporarily until we uh, resolve we, something? Wh why don't we wait and see what we have come up with when Mr. Fuller is here? And then we can do that all at the same time. I think that would be more appropriate. Okay. If that's. So remind, you remind me of that, but I think that's more appropriate. Because I'm thinking of that too, because I believe yep. Northampton is withholding. Yep. Yes, sir. Uh, as well. Uh, and the um, Regina and I at the HBAC meeting, which was excellent, I thought that was very good. I heard later that some people had just left. Um, because they couldn't find a spot in the parking lot. So hopefully the next meeting we have on that uh, state plan, we could have it when I come it. But Regina and I passed out uh, documentation that Fred had set up a couple of years ago on the annual cost to the town of Hampton 
in support of the beach, and it comes to around $1.2 million. So just, uh, just informational. And uh, everybody was anxious to, to grab a copy, and hopefully they'll... I barely got a copy, yeah. Yeah, hopefully uh, that will give people a little <laughs> idea what we're, um, what we're paying to support the state park. Um, and the last uh, item, I noticed that we have um, uh, finest kinds, brands, whatever, uh, have uh, completed... Let's see. Just wrote it down here. The entertainment license and posted Thanks. permit. That's for the restaurant, I, I'm assuming. Um, do we have anything in writing from Finest Kinds Council yet, Fred? Not yet. Okay, do we have a... <clears throat> Public Works is working with them. Uh, I should say the sewer division is working with them to get that done. I realize that they are because I saw Chris's um, email, yep. but I don't want to see that slip through the cracks. No, no, it won't. And it, Well, last time it slipped through the cracks for four years. Um, I would, uh, let's see. Uh, I have that. Whoops. The industrial surcharge fee. Can we get a brief report or a recap or anything from Wright Pierce telling us how you do it, how you set the fees, how you implement it? Can we have a little something, do you think? In well, they're, they're, they're doing the, actually, they're finishing up the new regulations for the sewer division, and that's one of them. And, and they will be come in and explain the entire process. Excellent. And, when, when it's ready. They're, okay, because I just don't want to forget that. Them. So. Okay, very nice. <clears throat> and that's it. Very good. I'm done. All right, I have a couple things. One of them is actually what Mary Louise already brought up a little bit. Yeah, I spoke with Henry, so he's going to come in for June 4th, and I agree with you. I think we should hold off anything on doing anything with hydrants until he's in here. Yeah. But I was at the uh, Commission for Long-Term Goals and Objectives for oh. Groundwater today. Oh, and Rockingham Planning Commission, their director, is part of the, of the committee. And he was talking, we were talking today about, we were going through our goals because we're getting ready to put together the report for recommendations. And one of the areas that I am in a subcommittee on is on mutual aid between seacoast towns. Oh. And we were trying to, because the fire, fire department seemed to have pretty ideal mutual aid situation. Yes, I do. You know, and I know that it's probably has to, you don't really know how it's going to work out until you have to, you sort of have to figure it out on a case by case basis. Mm -hmm. I would imagine most times. It's all pre-planned. All, yeah. They have it all laid out. So. It's the, this committee was interested in if there was something that they could perhaps look at that was I, I think talk to any one of the fire chiefs. I, I'm okay, sure. well that's yeah. what I was going to try to do is maybe reach out to our chief. Yeah, there is a mutual aid compact. Good. Right. We also have a public works compact with other towns. Okay. And the police department has one with yeah. other towns. Well, fire gets got brought up because of the hydrants, because I guess, oh, was it yeah. last year or two years ago, there was a fire in Newcastle, and there was something happened with one of the hydrants? But they it might was use water the out of Portsmouth or, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I guess they, mm -hmm. and I guess the, they're saying it was related to infrastructure maintenance issues on one of the hydrants? They didn't have capacity in the system. I think okay. that was the problem. The pipes were too small. Oh. Okay. Which is not unusual for a very old system. Oh. So. That's okay. not nice. All right. So that just, you know, it seems like I've been talking about hydrants all day. So I just wanted to bring that into the uh, situation. But, and then the second thing is an update on EPA. Uh, it looks like we got their response. They did their review of Coakley. And it seems, if I'm reading this letter right, that they are not going... They You're feel reading like, it right. Yeah, repeatedly states there is no current flow to the east. Huh. So they tend to say that there won't be any monitoring well set up. No, in the none to the east and none to the south. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. So they're, they're sort of retrenching themselves on what they originally intimated they were going to do, which was to uh, put wells in the east and the, and the south to see if there was any response from the Coakley landfill in that direction. And they've now retrenched. They're not going to do that at all. 
So they're not covering this area at all. Right, and that was specifically requested by Tom Ballestero, who we yeah, it's had. Been requested by us. It's been requested by several people. So right. um, they're not going to do it. Okay. Hmm. All right. Jim? Yeah, old business. Uh, Charlie Preston was in here, and he mentioned at the end the exit on Brown Ave. Is, is anybody working on that? Is he working on that? It's open. It's open for now. Oh, it's been used? Well, it's been used during the winter time. Okay, but how about, you know, Charlie was talking about during the summer and stuff, and he was going to work with Chief Sawyer. Is that is that happening? I'm just... Uh, I a can't, good question. Not, not, not to my knowledge at the current time. We're not really open except for activities at the... Uh, okay. Across the street. Uh, but, but he comes up and he, he comes in and he asks about it mm -hmm. and stuff, and I think, I think we really should investigate it and, and work with them on it. He, I can say he has met with the chief a number right. of times, and I could follow up on whether or not there's been any discussions about the traffic flow. All right, I know that they're in the midst of, of planning the summer crew and season, um, so uh, Lieutenant Gidley is kind of in charge of dealing with all of that with the crew that's there, so we can certainly take a look at that. But that would be the person to deal with, would be to deal with the chief? Yeah, and, and again, that communication's yeah. there. It's not an issue. Uh, but this new groups that's there are going to have some input on, on traffic flows and the safe way to do it. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure that we're, we're working yeah. with them. Yeah. <laughs> He's not yeah. shy to talk oh. to the chief. Rick? Um, I just thought I would mention, uh, you mentioned about the next meeting that there might be with the uh, Hampton Beach Area Commission. Mm. It's this week, this Thursday night. <gasps> This coming Thursday. Yeah, that's going to be the, uh, you know, the discussion of exactly what happened at this last meeting. Are they scheduling it and where? It's the regular Hampton Beach Area Commission meeting. And I assume it's in this place. Do you oh, know my that? goodness. I assume it's here as well. I haven't yeah. looked at the notice. <laughs> yeah, I haven't got my information about. Um, we need to put that out. A lot of the ladies told me at the meeting last Thursday that they were going on social media and getting all, you know, their friends well, and neighbors. Not, this is the regular meeting time. The, is it the last Thursday? I think it's the last of, Thursday. Of the, of yeah. the month, always. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that was brought up at the last meeting, not the one on May 10th, uh, was that possibly there needs to be more meetings than what have been scheduled in the past. In the past, there I haven't been any so. meetings in the summertime. Yeah. But I believe this year there are already some scheduled for during the summer. And uh, it's been brought up at the commission meetings that people would like uh, for there to be uh, meetings in the summer, mainly because there, that's, there aren't anyone here right. in the wintertime. Right. And that may be one reason why there were so many people here this time. Is a lot of people that had maybe just came back from Florida. Mm -hmm. um, although I'm, I don't think it was mainly that. I think it, Nancy Stiles worked hard to get uh, the information out there, and that really hasn't happened in the past. To Do you have any pass this pass outs, Rick, or anything you know? That because the well, the agenda will be uh, okay. You know, is posted, and. Um, you know, any any time that anyone has a uh, something that they would like to discuss, there's always uh, public comment. Charlie is usually there, right, Charlie? He's our only person that ever comments. <laughs> so if you'd like to join Charlie, yeah, well, I I probably and, will. That you can always come and comment, and it's always at the beginning of the meeting. Like, you know, you could go this week and comment on what you saw. Yeah. Uh, I do think there are going to be other people there. I've heard them already talking about it that are going to call and comment at public comment. Our technicians, I hope the room is going to be large enough. Uh, our technicians room. told me when I came in tonight that they will start running the tape of the Thursday, May 10 meeting right after our meeting closes tonight. And I would, we'll keep rerunning it. The public needs to see it. Well, there's a meeting next Thursday night at 7 o'clock. Next Thursday as in the 17th? No, it's the it's a 24th. Oh, 24th. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you because yeah. I thought I saw we, something. It's about... a week from Thursday. Okay, yeah. all right. Okay. Okay. This Thursday. Yeah. All right, that's what Good. I'm Good. preliminary Good. telling people. But you've been so very eloquent on the HBAC, and I watched the meeting a couple of times, and you've... Uh, You've done a, a good job. Well, I think that a lot was brought out, and um, 
I think there were some interesting things that did happen at that meeting. First of all, um, I, you know, I, I, I haven't seen the minutes of the meeting yet, but let's say there were 20 people that commented. There was really only one out of 20 or one out of the amount of people that commented that felt it was a po that it was positive. All the other comments were all negative. Uh, you should which, have heard the people in the audience when you uh, walk around. It doesn't mean that you can't find some good even on, in those negative comments, and that's probably what will be discussed this week. Mm -hmm. But um, I think one thing that was very interesting, as I've thought about it, is that all of those people that showed up, and there were more than a hundred, yes, um, uh, they, there, I don't think there were any business people there except the ones that are on the commission. Um, couple, at least... Yeah. No, there was some there. Yeah. Well, so, they, didn't yeah. Comment, they didn't comment and stand up and say what they felt about the, uh, the project. Blondo did. There was, there was who did? Blondo, Blondo did. Well, Blondo. he was the one. Yeah. He's the one... I, I was going to say, there was yeah. only one that commented, yeah. and it was a negative and, comment. And uh, uh, Uda. 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 Yeah, and that was another negative one. Oh, yeah. Of the audience, but people talking Some amongst each other when we walked around. Uh, there weren't any business people <laughs> commenting positively. That's what I was right. trying to say. Right. So, I mean, that makes you have to wonder if the business people aren't commenting uh, positively mm -hmm. and all of the residents are mm -hmm. not Man. commenting positively. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we have to really look at that. Mm. Good. What I took away from it was that 80% of the thing people weren't talking about, which is apart from from uh, Ashcore to Ashcore. They didn't worry about that part. It was the south part by the bridge. And right. I think they got to worry about when the bridge, when yeah. they got to worry about what's going to happen with the bridge. Yeah. And then Ashworth north. Right. That's so that was the two too. areas that were really talking. Yeah. The center part of the beach, nobody was, they, they were, everybody seemed okay with that. Right. Well, you know, the there were people didn't. there to speak positively of it, the other people that are in business. That's the part that surprised me. Mm -hmm. um, and that's exactly what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. uh, and they could be there to speak positively if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, the, I think another thing that's very interesting, because I've been at all of the yes. meetings for the last, I've been there for pretty much 10 years now. Yep. Um, when that company, what is it called? Uh, the name of the company that did the study. Uh, the VHB. VHB. Yeah. VHB. VHB. You know, we they had the man that was in charge of everything, who was a great guy, and I've seen him here that the board of selectmen has used in different other studies that I've seen him talk about all through the years. I can't think of his name right now, um, but he's an eloquent man, and he was around for years and years and years. He why they ended up hiring, you know, he was in charge of this whole project and they knew that he was going to be retiring. So now when he should be there, you know, if he was there now when they're closing the deal, uh, I can't imagine why we ended up with like that poor guy, Mr. Cleary, that was there. He doesn't seem to know, you know, he didn't have a lot of, comp he didn't have the ability that the other man had. Yeah. The other man was very good. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you a lot of things that the other man recommended are not in this plan. The other man was disappointed, and I think that's one reason he retired. Ooh. You know, he had a lot of things that he would have liked to have seen in the plan. They were downplayed, and all of a sudden he retired. So I don't know if that fit into it, but why he, why that company would have been hired when that man was retiring before the project's even finished, I do not know. And I look back upon it now, I, I had no idea. Uh, maybe no one on the board understood mm. that. Right. But all of a sudden, the person he's the one that did all the traffic studies. He's the one that sat on the side of the road all during the summer because they were out doing those studies during the summertime. And he and another person, maybe it's Mr. Cleary, I don't really know, uh, they did a lot of work. Hmm. But now, he's, no, you know, he's not there. They could have maybe even invited him for that particular meeting. Maybe yeah. we should have. I don't know. But he's yeah. missing in action. <coughs> okay. Mr. Chairman, the old business. Yes, well, in line with what Rick is is saying as well, uh, we can solve one problem with our number one red listed bridge. If when the bridge collapses, because it's going to take them the next fifty years to replace it, then we won't have to worry about the traffic driving over. Okay. 
Um, the only thing I had on the old businesses, I did talk with the uh, chairman of the planning board, and we are going to meet on June 11th, which is our off one of our off weeks. Oh. So we will meet at 7 o'clock on June 11th with the planning board, and I will sit down with him, and we will go over a agenda. Good. That is a Monday. Is, a Monday. Yeah. is it going to be televised? Yep. Yeah. Good. So, okay, new business. We have a 2017 Warren Article 31 record scanning project. Mr. Chairman, uh, our deputy town manager has gone to great lengths yes. to make sure that this project is finally about to take forward. So I'm going to let him talk on it because he, he's been down watching this progress go forward. So uh, just to bring everybody up to speed, this was a project to scan old records, primarily going to start with the tax office as our, our, our first focus. Um, and initially it was approved by Warren Article 31 in 2017. Right. Um, and we went out to bid at that time. It's a $50,000 contract. We went out to bid at that time, but got bids back. And as we went through them, um, we found numerous problems. So the recommendation yeah. was made to, to uh, dis disallow those. And we then started a team from in-house um, to start evaluating and find a subject matter expert that helped us. There are so many holes and issues we were concerned with, uh, maintenance of our records, whether it's compliant with the state, a whole myriad of things that took place. So we uh, went about identifying vendors who are more qualified to do it, and it led us to the group that I recommend to you tonight, and that is a, uh, a group called Data Bank out of Canton, Massachusetts. Uh, we have spent time uh, meeting with them, going over what would take place, and they actually did a test and evaluation where we gave them some of the data. They scanned it for us, showed us final form on how we search for it. it certainly meets all of the standards we need. I and mean, our long-term goal is, you know, we have paper all over this place. Uh, the state's um, uh, laws have come up to speed <coughs> to allow us to scan them and have them in electronic format. And our goal long-term is eventually to have all of those public documents available for the public to search in any manner they wish. So this will get us started on that. So I'm asking for your uh, authorization and your vote um, to uh, award the contract of $50,000 to Data Bank of Canton, Massachusetts. Uh, this is consistent with your purchasing policy under Section 718.5.1 and 7184. Do we need to have them to... Uh, to the waiver of the uh, yeah I, I would recommend under this circumstances for two reasons um, if, recommending this in the best interest of the town based on the research we did and they are a an authorized Massachusetts contract they currently have a contract to do this work in Massachusetts uh, but our policy says federal and state of New Hampshire um, I would recommend we utilize that Massachusetts contract they're going to honor those prices for us um, we're very confident in the work that they can do based on what we did. So I would ask, that's why it's 718, 5.1. It's in the best interest of the town. I'd ask for an official vote of that. Okay, so Rick, that's your motion. I'll second it. Second by Regina. Any questions? Yeah. And, and, and why, why nobody in New Hampshire? The, the bids came from all over the place. The companies that we discontinued were shipping it offshore, and we weren't confident about our records should something happen. Mm. That's what led us. And we, a number of them, I can't speak whether they're specifically New Hampshire companies, but they were from all over New England that do this work. And um, we had bad references come from some of them as we reached out. Some things didn't look right to us as we found sort of this company as, you know, Waddell, Jim, so it just didn't look right to us. So we discontinued and went with vendors. We were able to identify from folks in the business and say, yeah, this is a reputable company. And we dialed in on these folks. And they'll be dealing with confidential material, right? That yeah. Well, no, the these reasons. are public records that we're asking them. But some of them are, some we're going to keep as historical. They're, they're old records that we want to maintain. And you have to be able to access them. For example, we send all this information down and somebody wants a public record request. Several of the other vendors didn't have a mechanism for us to get that information. These folks have a thing that we can get it within, I think it's 24 hours of the request. So, you know, it's a professional, rep rep reputable company. Anyways? Yes. When, when, what's our starting point? A specific date? Are we going backward or forward or? Uh, so essentially this will take care of all of the paper records in the tax office up to date. So we have a certain amount that are currently online that she has electronically stored. This will take care of all of the, we believe, all of the records uh, that they have paper records up to where we're currently storing in that office. Now we have many others. We're going to be back with, with other requests for financing to continue this project to get everything in the building done I eventually. I see what you're saying. So assessing 
will come in as one chunk, you'll be doing? That's our goal is to get all of our paper records here that are public records up and accessible to everybody. <clears throat> and then we can free up space in a lot of cases and get rid of some of those paper records. Wow. Yeah. We lost a lot of records, if I recall, in the old town office yeah, for the, the basement. The 50s flooded. fire. Yes. The flooding, the 50s fire, 50 whatever fire burnt some records. But based on what we have in this building and space is, in, you know, is, is important. Um, I, I look at what's in the legal office storage back there, oh, and I'm horrified God, yes. what's there. So that's, you know, in time, that's where we need to go. Yeah. So we have a oh, motion good. and a second. Yep. All those in favor? Unanimous. Just to let you know, too, that the Historical Society just bought a trunk from uh, the Dow family, oh. and it had over 400 records in it oh, wow. that were from before Dow's history was actually written. Really? Some of them go back that far. Wow. back into the 1600s and they're, they're going through them right now oh, wow. there's over 400 of them so that's uh, looking at some of these eyes don't go back that far but i've had the opportunity to do that up at unh's library another project i did once and that's you know white glove touching uh, documents of that time is is pretty pretty well, they're, impressive. they're scanning in the stuff they have that they feel is important and uh, Good. they're doing Good. that so it's which is quite a fine for them to get so yeah that yeah, was $4,000, I think. $4,200, $4, something like that. Yeah. So. We found it in Arizona, somewhere like that. Really? That was Idaho. Idaho. Those, th those things, Idaho. things are great finds. Some, somebody, how it was found, just curiosity, is it was found in a storage locker, and a person bought the locker. Wow. Oh, wow. And so he found it, saw what he had, and got in contact with the, with the, uh, with the uh, historical society wow. so they were able to negotiate and get it back and uh, he this, wanted a lot more money yeah he thought it was worth a lot more than that but <laughs> they, they finally settled and i don't remember what the exact price was but uh it, it is back in town so mm -hmm. something very interesting to have for the town new business mr yep. chairman um we have been working diligently uh, at the board's request to uh, move forward with the force mains in the, in the marsh. <clears throat> we have uh, a couple of proposals for you this evening. Uh, we have received the report from the engineers and their recommendation with regards to the pipe that has been breached twice is that it be replaced immediately. It is no longer serviceable. The other pipe has one to three years of life left in it and that will be no longer serviceable after that. Uh, what they found is that the current pipe that was, and I'm just going to talk about the one that was damaged mm -hmm. twice, uh, has something in excess of 87% of its, of its uh, strength gone. It's depleted. <clears throat> Excuse me. In fact, you can literally dismantle the pipe with your bare hands. That's how bad it is. Um, that being the case, uh, we recommend strongly that with the, with the summer coming and the possibility of, of this pipe again failing, uh, perhaps catastrophically, that the board authorize <clears throat> the use of uh, an, uh, a, a, a secondary main to be laid on top of the ground across the uh, marsh next to Route 101 uh, near the new poles that have been erected down there, over to the, down to uh, the Masonic Temple and across across land and down uh, to uh, Tide Mill Road, and uh, then hence to the wastewater treatment plant, so that we have a, a good line that is currently will be currently usable for us to uh, transmit material down to the, the wastewater treatment plant without failure. We also recommend, as we're doing this, that the, the selectmen authorize us to uh, petition the New Hampshire Legislature. Um, preferably this week, preferably tomorrow, uh, for special legislation that will allow us to uh, streamline and move forward on the decommissioning of the lines that are there and the installation of new lines um, that a special time meeting be held before August 28th, 2018. Uh, and we already have the legislation drawn, uh, which has been approved by Bond Council. And we would ask the selectmen to approve that. You saw it earlier this evening. Um, so that we can proceed forward in putting that legislation forward and proceed to, uh, to have a special town meeting to see if the town will authorize the replacement of these pipes as soon as possible. Okay. Questions from the board? Mary Louise. Just 
uh, just uh, my favorite thing, um, we will be using um, plastic pipe. It's a specially designed plastic pipe, yes. Thank you. Regina? So you're looking to authorize? I would, I would suggest we do three different yeah. motions, recommendation yes, right. motions off yeah. of what the manager has just gone through for you. Right. right. The first being that you are authorizing that we uh, proceed with replacing that pipe at the earliest possible convenience and, and install the surface pipe. Right. If you want to talk what we anticipate the cost to be for that, do you want me to talk about that briefly? Well, yes, we can. Uh, it, it, it appears, and, and this, is, this is only an estimate at this point in time, we are looking to find out whether or not we can get insulated pipe, which does not appear to be available to us currently. But the, the price for non-insulated pipe, which would, may have to be removed in the wintertime depending upon temperatures and so forth, is somewhere in the area of three-quarters of a million dollars. Uh, that's for a year, and uh, that's, of course, very expensive. Uh, that will be taken out of the current budget, um, and it will be also put into the warrant article, uh, which will require a bond issue. So uh, we're trying not to overburden the current tax rate. Uh, by trying to meter these things out as we as we go along, so we would be looking for a, for a bond article for a, a bond warrant article at the special town meeting, but the cost for the pipe is approximately three quarters of a million dollars for a year, which breaks down to approximately a hundred thousand to dollars install, install right. and thirteen thousand six hundred dollars per week for the rental of that pipe. We've explored the other options and and find that this is the one we recommend. Right. Rusty. Yes. So, in, in looking at the report from the engineers, yes, sir. Yes. At one point in location A, on the report on the table here, the only thing holding that pipe to, is the cement, not the pipe itself, right? It That's says, correct. It says in location A, the cement liner was likely the only remaining wall that was preventing leakage or failure. That's correct. So what that means is that that cement goes. The entire pipe goes. Goes. So I mean, the severity. I, I think. I think we really have to make sure that people realize the severity of what we're talking about right now. It's not just maybe we're going to have a leak. Mm -hmm. Oh no, we're going to lose a the pipe. Will come, but that there are sections of it right now that the, the pipe is not encasing it. It's it's the cement doing right. the job. Yeah. And if you if you look at the area that failed this time and the cement that was in it, it looked like a honeycomb. It just was peppered with holes. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and that's, that's, that's a terrible sign because not only could you take the cement, which is a special hardened type cement that goes in these pipes, and just break it off with your fingers, but you could also take the metal in the pipe and snap it in two with just your thumb and your index finger. And, and this report is going to be put... It's going to go up online. Town online website. By tomorrow. Yeah. Hopefully so yes. people, anybody who's interested can look at the report. I mean, it's, it's a fairly detailed report. It gives good pictures, good graphs. It is. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that's really important that... And, it, and we can highlight, again, in their recommended next steps at the end to be specific for you, it's, it reads in those last two paragraphs, so based on the pipe thickness measured in the pitting tensile yield elongation testing, it can be concluded that this pipe is near the end of its life. Failures that are more likely to occur in the future include corrosion failures that will develop holes in the exterior of the pipe due to corrosive conditions. At a minimum, the DI force main should be rehabilitated or replaced immediately. And it is based on that recommendation. And again, keep in mind, our public works engineers, the director and assistant director, have been telling us this for two years now, that that pipe lacks confidence. This clearly supports that third party issue, that that pipe essentially is not something we want to continue putting waste through and the risks that it pertains, so we must replace it. That is why we're recommending we do the surface pipe in the immediate and pursue with all possible haste getting the permanent solution done. Right, and it, it's essential that we have the two pipes, right? I mean, it, you, can, it <coughs> cannot operate on one, one pipe. pipe. We can for part of the year, but when it comes to summertime, it requires yeah. two pipes, and if major storms occur, right. even in the winter time, it requires two pipes. Like it did in March. Right. Correct. Mm -hmm. So, Absolutely. So, Could do you want to word them? Yeah, restate. So, I would say in the first, or let's take the first play that it's yeah. the, the, the board um, authorize, um, accept the report, the, the report, <laughs> and that the board um, authorize the replacement of these pipes at the earliest possible convenience. I'll do that as your first one. Right. Jim? I'll make that motion. Second. I'll second. Mary Louise, all those in favor? 
Unanimous. The second, I would authorize us to proceed with as soon as practical to install um, the essentially our emergency plan, which is the alternate surface right. pipe, um, as soon as possible. And we will pursue to do that as soon as we finalize the state permitting. Um, and we have our emergency plan, so we'll move forward with that as soon as possible. I'll make that motion. Second. I'll second it. And just for discussion, the reason that you would do that immediately is because if there was a leak, how long would it take to do that? I mean, if somebody said, well, why don't you wait? Yes. Why? Our emergency plan currently calls for it's at least 11 days, at least 11 days, for us to mobilize, uh, hire the company, mobilize them, and come in and put that surface pipe in. That assumes we have all the state permitting in, in place and that type of thing. The reason we want to do that is so that we don't have to implement our emergency plan because we must abandon this other, we have no confidence, additional leaks into the, you know, the risks of what we will have out of there is unacceptable to us and we feel we need to have another plan. So I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. And I want to make a comment, please. Uh, so pursuing this legislatively mm -hmm. by presenting a bill yes. is going to drastically decrease the amount of time we have to wait to go to a town meeting, correct? That is the reason we recommend the third for your consideration is to direct us to pursue filing uh, a piece of emergency legislation to authorize us to move forward with a special town meeting for bonding purposes and a condensed schedule um, in order to replace these pipes at the earliest possible time. I'm so, ready to make that motion. Okay, motion, second. second. Any questions? All those in favor? But, you know, oh. Uh-oh. What? I had a question. Oh, right. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, uh, go ahead. Uh, uh. Wait, I think it slipped my mind. <laughs> Mine's a terrible thing. It is. So. Well, while Mr. Waddell is thinking, may we provide or will we be authorized to provide copies of the study with the pictures and the, the, um, the public document recap now, yes. yes. To it Mr. is a Sullivan. public document. It's going to be put on the, the uh, town, okay. town tomorrow Does morning. Okay. Because he'll want yeah. documentation. Yeah. Yeah. It's a public tomorrow. document. It's been distributed to the board. It's been discussed and yeah. approved. So it is a public document. Yes, We'd like can. to see that on, uh, in the Hampton Union. And Jim, you figure out your question? No. Nah. All right. So <laughs> motion. All those in favor? Unanimous. I want to thank you guys for, for all the work you've done this weekend. This I know you guys have been working extra hard. And I also want to thank your contacts at the state who have also been helping us with yeah, this. And, and that's been, thank you for pointing that out. I mean, again, Fred and I are just here presenting, but this is a team of the whole oh, yeah. crew of legal finance and most importantly, the amount of work that's been done by Jen and Chris done at Public yeah, Works and their team. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that report was very well done. Any, Any other questions or, or, nope. or issues for us? Nope. Anything else on a new business? Got a motion to adjourn? Motion adjourn at 8.14. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much, Channel 22.